What's up, fish tankers? Welcome to the penultimate episode of my season two fish tank review. Obligatory, yada yada, subscribe to my channel, like all that stuff, please and thank you. We're almost at 10K, so if you could do that, that'd be very, very appreciated. So let's get into the prelude to the final challenge. Day 37. TJ leaves in the AM to go to the doctors. It turns out that he just had a bruised rib. There's a major plumbing issue in the house, which leads to a much more relaxed day as productions had their hands full with feces, quite quite literally like a, a pipe burst and there's just feces in the basement. Production promote the freeloaders to producers who come up with pretty lackluster games to play, most of which involve licking a body part of Chris. Ben and Jet move a computer into B2 to produce the show while the basement is filled with poop. This was actually a really cool uh, change of pace because we kind of got a little peek behind the curtain as to what's actually happening in the basement with production during their their day-to-day -day operations which would include ben and jet not knowing what a feedback loop is jet when you watch b2 the sound form the computer feedbacks into the room mics dummy <laughs> that's what's happening they bring Greg up into B2 to help them produce the show. TTS is being relentless to them, so the actual producers in the room start playing into the meme that like they they think they're doing like this really artsy kino type thing, but in reality they're just coming up with these really dumb childish games for the for the fish to play. So with them playing into it, they just come up with like even more ridiculous challenges, like a everybody has to move in slow motion challenge, uh, would guess Oliver's shoe size challenge. Cowboy inexplicably makes a super room. Hello. Oh. Oh. What's that? Max. Max. Yo. Yo, your name Johnny? Hey guys. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Save the model. Be too be careful. Taylor goes into the goon cave for a confessional, and Vance shows Oliver how production liked to mess with the fish. I heard TTS say that, it's like, oh, don't tell anyone, but Taylor and the fish will just say that you're cute, so you could, like, play off that. Oliver said you're cute? No, 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 she said that I was cute. Oh. Wait. Uh, Taylor like, Canadian oh, rednecks have your back. You, you, you got this. We all believe in you. I got it. I don't know. I mean, that's Shut what up. I heard on TTS. Okay, let's turn it. Yeah. It's like, shh, don't tell <clears throat> but, uh... Hey, do you think Oliver is cute? No. Oh. Damn. Maybe TTS was lying. Their His personality yeah. ruins it. Oh! <laughs> What do you have to say about that? Greg ends up leading a Dungeons and Dragons game, which is period accurate, and the fish seem to really get into it. It was pretty wholesome. Greg gets a body cam while the fish play beer pong. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, Greg! Yeah. Oh, oh. And Greg plays Skyrim. There it is. Hurrah! 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 Push! Push! If, if I take it out on your fatigue too much, you're not going to be able to get back up. <laughs> uh, I'm a character from Skyrim Oblivion Moral Wounds. Choke cam. Listen, I understand there's a level of irony to people liking and endorsing Greg. Um, the fact that he doesn't really want to be there, it, it makes him really endearing to the fans. I get that. But Greg, he does actually have some hilarious moments. He is like genuinely pretty funny, like a pretty funny dude. And him with the body cam on, it was just, it was top G content. Top G Greg tent. Day 38. TJ has pink eye and has to go to the doctors, again. Most of the house, just like the day prior, were in like a bit of a malaise. Except for Taylee, who has noticed that she's the only one with her head in the game. Baffled, in a way, as to how 
everyone's kind of checking out. Um, it's very interesting to see that they're not as in this competition as they were. Shinji gives a Hooter review of the house. Is that why you don't like Taylee? Because she is pretty flat? Taylee. Everyone is flat in this show, except for Nifty and Taylor. TJ comes back and he's been diagnosed with double pink eye, so he has to quarantine for the rest of the day and wear body armor. TJ has double pink eye, so, <laughs> so it's extremely contagious. Jesus Christ. Uh, so we put that on him, so you guys can have a visual reminder on your shoulder, your shoulder pad. So this is the contagious suit. When you see red, think, Danger, pink eye. He tells a funny story about something that happened with him and Bex when they went to the doctors. When we went to get the prescription, uh, you know, I'm under my uh, mom's insurance and Bex with me, was with me and uh, the guy asked her, her age and uh, he thought that Bex was my mom. With Taylee making the claim that Airsoft Fatty's supple naked body was sitting on all of the furniture in the house for the past few days, that he was the cause of TJ's double pink eye. You Chris said you didn't Massive want me to. W. Get on that shit. Stop, stop, stop. stop. With you. It's about time someone. Nah, her you, out you've on done made some sly remarks and death. shit that really pissed me off. This would start off as a pretty, pretty normal argument, but very quickly escalate into like a season one style Airsoft Fatty. Uh, autism explosion. This argument goes on for a really, really long time. I'm not gonna try and condense it all down, but the gist of it is that the other day when Taylee threw a bottle, a concoction of like Zip and other things onto Fatty when he had just woken up, or rather it just woke him up, he was still convinced that there was pee in that and he feels like Taylee is singling him out because he's autistic. Alluding to that she has no respect for autistic people and she's only singling him out because he's autistic and thinks that he's weak. Don't even act like you've been chilling this whole fucking time. No, I'm not You're the one throwing that. piss on me. Chris, I haven't. You're the I, one that threw piss on me. Even piss. You're the one that put piss on me, you bitch. I didn't put I'm not trying to be psycho. I'm trying to move the character on from that shit. No, that's the thing. I'm tired of being an ass to have this character. I'm tired of it. Because then it starts shit like this, too. You think it's funny to discriminate against people with mental disabilities? I really hope the fuck you don't treat your father like this. I hope you give that man the utmost respect. I do. Because I'm like Frank. I do. I don't want to go hands on. You don't know how I treat my dad. And don't bring my dad into this, Chris. I could bring your mom into this, but I'm not. So f off with that. Your father's not dead. No, but your mom had cancer and was dying. It was not piss. Yes, and staff told me about whose piss it was. And how do you know they weren't lying to you, dude? How do you know they were gaslighting you? Dude, they are not. How the f do you know they weren't? They are. How do you, how do you not know that you're the f***ing joke here? You're the joke. And they're using you as the joke. You're the butt end of the joke, Chris. They want you to. They want us to with you. Shut up about your bigot dad. He's a higgler. They want us to with you, Chris, because of your reaction. You can't take it. With Tay not backing down, Fatty goes to the basement and gets a bucket full of snowballs to throw at her, but she still isn't faced. The body cam is put on Cowboy, who brings Taylee into the attic. Do you ever speak to Chris Chan over voice, Chris Chan? No. <laughs> Have you ever had impure thoughts about Trish or Nifty? No. Trish goes next on the polygraph. Would you have stayed here if you knew we were eventually going to kill you? <laughs> uh, no. And then Shinji gets cut off early because Taylee rang the beef bell. Are you scared of Jimmy? No. No. Production want Chris to box Taylee, but Chris refuses because he's a gentleman. The body cam is now transferred onto Tay, and the judge and Jet manage to convince Chris into doing a pee your pants first challenge. So this is going to be the first to piss their pants challenge. Oh. Are you serious? Like, actually? Yeah. yeah. Oh. All right, referees, keep a careful eye. Look for the first signs of a wet spot. <laughs> and begin. And... You're pissing already. <laughs> Uh, I see wet, I see wet, I see wet, I see wet, oh my god! Oh, 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 o
Chris W. Almost like immediately. It, <laughs> the speed at which this man did this was it was it was nothing short than incredible. And the idea that Taylee didn't win this, I mean, she literally pees 30 times a day. And on top of that, right when they put the body cam on her, she's like, oh, I need to pee. What do I do about the body cam? Like, she had to pee minutes before this challenge started. The, there's no way she, the, like, the deck was stacked in her favor. The polygraph tests continue. Oliver gets confirmed gay by pretty much everyone. And our main event is, of course, TJ. He gets a giant spike when asked if he is lube cooch. Are you lube cooch? Um, y yeah. But he later clarifies that he is not the R34 lube cooch. What's that? I mean, I I get I'm I I I guess I am Luke Cooch, but not the infamous one, I guess. He has asked one final question. Oh, I'm sorry, I have one more. Are you Luke Cooch on Rule Thirty Four? No. Okay. And with no real spikes, TJ has officially or unofficially beaten the allegations. Until, assumedly, days, is that a word, assumedly? Days later, production gaslight him into thinking that he actually is guilty. And then we have uh, people LARPing as polygraph techs on Twitter arguing over whether or not the polygraph test showed him that he was lying. An emotionally charged and spiritually beaten down Chris goes into the goon cave for a confessional. It seems like Taylee mentioning that people are laughing at him and that he's the butt of the joke had really struck a chord. I don't know, but I gotta figure it out. Chris, what you're going through sounds really hard but not as hard as the mechanical pencil stuck in my urethra. He's crying and talking about how he's done with life because he can't afford the medication he needs to survive and just wants to hop on a motorcycle and disappear. Aside from being like a unrealistic solution to the problem, because ultimately all he would really be doing is running away from the problem instead of actually dealing with it and eventually it would, it would catch up with them. Outside of that, uh, TTS wasn't being helpful. I'm prescribed it for a reason. How many cheeseburgers you fit in that cheeseburger locker of yours? How many? Another little meme I'm pretty sure I skipped over that's been going on in the tank for the last few days. I didn't think it would really lead to anything, but unbeknownst to me, it did. Uh, Taylee has been getting soy tax. Basically, anytime she has like a soy jack cringe moment, she is forced to pay a, a tax with her chips. On Twitter, a video of her being super cringy as a 15 year old surfaced. So production played it over the speakers and retroactively taxed her on it. Day 39. Before bed, the Brotherhood TJ and Shinji confer in B1 to discuss tactics for the upcoming elimination. As a team, they plan on sabotaging Taylee, but production route the audio from B1 into Doghouse for Taylee to hear. Unfortunately for the Brotherhood, Chris heard TJ say from the Doghouse that he doesn't think Chris is that smart and that he can be weaponized against Tay. They also say they plan on messing with Tay's sleep so she's not at the top of her game. So the Doghouse duo form an alliance and Fatty goes on a covert blitzkrieg to keep the entire upstairs awake, allowing Tay to rest. During the day, they have a giant cleanup of the house. All or at least most of the furniture is collected and removed from the tank completely as we move towards the finale. The fish even use the spray tan to become Mexican day workers. Production sit all the fish and freeloaders around the house and get one-on-one -on -one interviews about their time in the tank. They try to get Greg to drop an N. You want a cigarette? <coughs> no, I'm good. All right, last chance. N-word to the camera. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. We're begging for it. Now. One time. Now. Can you mouth it so we can dub it in? No. Nothing? No. 
All right, what if we change you to black in post-production? Three fish are also tasked with writing and rehearsing victory speeches in the attic away from everyone else, including Trish, who I assume they were just trolling her, letting her know that she still might actually be eligible for the main prize, which I, I really don't think she is. Frank shows up dressed as a farmer, though his fit comes off more of Mario to me. He reveals that Trish had actually DM'd him on Instagram prior to season two and called him daddy. This would lead to the two of them starting a relationship and kissing on camera. Come on. Just a pack. Right here. Just uh, I'll put my hands behind my back. No, no. Come on. Come for the great heads. Kiss on the cheek. Come on. Well, you're gonna kiss me on the cheek or I kiss you on the cheek? Both. Dual cheek kisses. Chris, you're seriously gonna let Greg absolutely only one? Should... Frank plays Tickle the Baby to Chris's dismay. Lashing out because I'm a cranky baby. I need a tickle to help me relax. A relaxing tickling sesh with the bros. Anyhow, move set would be earthquake, toxic, recover, and surf. Or no, skull. Skull's a better move. Teammate number two. It is the legendary Pokemon, Arcanine. Tickle the baby. Rocket, baby, fire blast, the baby, fire guard, baby, street speed, the baby, and loud jar. Tickle the baby. Tickle the baby, tickle the baby, tickle the baby, tickle the baby. Wee, 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 tickle the baby, 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 tickle He won't give Fatty any breathing room and ends up taking a tumble. I will f*** up, I will f*** up it. You leave me alone, I'll leave it alone. You leave me alone, I'll leave it alone. Chickens get released into the house. God. My best guess is why these, these chickens are there is that the final, the final challenge will be bonding with these chickens over the next few days ultimately leading to them having to slaughter them and then eat them. Which I guess would mean Taylee's probably gonna win if that's the case, because I don't think Shinji or TJ have the heart or lack thereof to go through with that. Josie has a pep talk with the new freeloaders. Hey guys, I made you guys get out of the blind spot. The camera, it can't see you. You guys need to get out of the fireplace. Chris rings the beef bell on Greg pretty much out of nowhere. I was genuinely confused why he did this at the time. Um, his claim is basically that Greg is unappreciative of his time in the house and anytime he's ever really asked about it, he, he really just asks about getting more money and he seems to be there just for the money, which is like whatever, but he seemed really upset by this and this is the first time he's ever mentioned it. So I don't know, it, it just seemed weird to me. But Jet comes up and vetoes it. Uh, we don't want to do beefs anymore. <laughs> We're, we're not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do what anymore? We're not do, I we all don't wanna do it anymore. I don't wanna do beefs. My assumption is that he probably knew that Greg would walk if he had to fight Fatty. After this, Chris is in a foul mood and tries to get some alone time, but is convinced by production to do some light sparring with Frank instead. It actually goes pretty well until this happened. Fight. <laughs> Nice work, Chris. <laughs> you okay, buddy? Not bad. <laughs> you alright? Trish, help him up. Come on. <laughs> no, no. Knock people's punching bags out. You're not a punching bag. Mm -hmm. Pop me pretty good. Good effort, Chris. Chris is humiliated at losing his pants during the fight and goes upstairs to be alone once again. Various people are trying to talk him down because Chris still believes that he's the butt of the joke and is being used as a prop by production. An idea that was hammered into his head by Tay the day before. Judge comes in and assures him that this is definitely not the case. Did Tay Lee tell you uh, that we bring you out just to humiliate you and get views? In your hand, I, look at me, look, look at me, Chris. I swear, to, I swear to God, I swear my life, that's not true, okay? I swear to God, that's not true. I swear my life. Yeah, we gotta lose weight. Season three. 100%. Season three, we're gonna get an exercise bike. 
I'm going to do the treadmill. I'm going to be working out with you, but we're going to, we're going to lose weight. Cause I got, I have to too. The two then train with Frank in a support role. The three finalists are given jumpsuits and are tasked with painting a colored line on them. So they can easily be told apart since they all have bald heads, blue for TJ, yellow for Shinji and red for Tay. The fish begin to drink as it is the eve before the final elimination challenge. They play truth or dare which is called Greg or Frank. We get drunk Greg body cam for the rest of the night as well. Chris tries to join and is humiliated in seconds. All right, the game is Greg or Dare. It is truth or dare, but if you choose- Wow. If you choose truth, you must take a shot. Frank tries to peer pressure him into drinking, and he has a fit and leaves to the goon cave. Chris ended up hibernating in the goon cave, and the contestants are moved into B3 so Cowboy can do construction, prepping downstairs for the final challenge. Frank gingerly peppers the door with a couple kicks to wake up the slumbering fatty. Can you stop kicking my head? What are you doing? Can you stop kicking my head? You all right? No! Damn, nigga. Well, can you open the door, please? I can't now. You've locked me. You broke the lock. I can't get out. Well, I guess you have to live in there from now on, bro. That's not funny, dude. Stop. You got it. Fuck. Oh, no! No! Oh. Okay. My bad. You all right? Leave me alone, dude. Just leave me alone. I was just trying to open the door, buddy. No, you're fine. No, you're fine. You're all good. You want some weed? You want some weed? Chris ends up leaving for like the 40th time. One of the chickens gets placed in the goon cave. How rude. During Chris's time in the basement, they continue playing Greg or Frank, and Frank gets Greg to admit that he'd say the N-word to save someone from being essayed. I'd play the clip, but honestly, the R-word gets tossed around so much, like 60% 60, 60 of the clip would end up being censored. Find it if you can. As per usual, Chris comes back upstairs and sticks out the rest of the show. Greg, who is blackout drunk at this point, ends up crying from the general stress of the show, as well as the essay and N-word talk. No, man. Greg. No, buddy. Don't cry. Come here. Give me a hug. Come here. Come here. It's okay, man. It's okay. Don't be sad. You got this, Greg. Don't be sad. Everybody here loves you, man. Yeah, man. You're Frank continues his sex pest arc, dumping Trish for Taylor. And they kiss. Whoa! Twice. You're gonna let that bald, frumpy lady steal your chud husband from you. And as the fish go to bed, the house is in a state of metamorphosis for the final challenge. Swamp Olympics. <laughs>